Welcome to Keys News, I'm Jess Foley. And I'm Dan McLaughlin. Coming up today... Salford gets a grant to protect from flooding. Anti-fracking campaigners enjoy a free gig at Barton Moss. And we'll look at the spring and summer trends to come. Good afternoon. We start with news about the River Irwell and its potential to flood thousands of homes and businesses in Salford. But there might be some good news. A grant's been made available to protect them. Our top report is from Penny James. This is the river that is receiving a £100,000 boost from the Environmental Agency. The new fund will protect 2,000 homes and businesses in Salford and will create 1,000 jobs when work begins in 2015. In the past, funds have gone towards creating a flood storage basin. The new cash will go towards creating metal stanchions to protect the river bank. And a new plan has just been put in place to create a second flood storage basin in the river behind me here, which will work in unison with the existing one. Well, um, the, uh, the biggest uh, flood in uh, recent memory was in 1946. Uh, where, uh, where I'm standing now, I would be completely underwater. You know, as we've seen in, in recent events in Somerset, Thames Valley and the South West, uh, you can go for a long time thinking that you're safe and then suddenly the big one ar 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 arrives and what uh, these new flood defences will do will protect us against that big one when eventually it comes. I've been here about 25 years. Mm -hmm and uh, I've, I've never, never seen anything myself. I don't know anybody that's been affected by it either. We may not be able to control the weather, but this project will certainly see a brighter future for Salford residents. Penny James, Keys TV News. OK, sorry about this. Another story about cuts to public services. But don't worry, it's not more misery, but a group that's been formed to combat the cuts. Here's Cat Houston. The Mary Quayle Club hosted its first meeting this week entitled Whatever Happened to the Welfare State? Bernadette Highland, chair of the group, explained the group's purpose. Inspiration for Mary because she's a woman who believed that trade unions could um, help make the world a better place and that she believed that all people, men and women, should get together and work together to um, improve society. Two guest speakers, Hugh Caffrey, an NHS campaigner, and Paula Bartley, expert on the life of Ellen Wilkinson, spoke about the issues within the welfare state. Ellen echoed the current socialist belief that a planned economy was the only real solution to the economic crisis. She advocated public control of the banking system and nationalising utilities, transport and the essential industries. It is time, she insisted, for workers' control. The NHS is caught in a vice from three directions and keep our NHS public exists to oppose the cuts, oppose the privatisation and campaign for a publicly run, publicly funded, publicly owned national health service accountable to the public, a democratic NHS. We could, we could make sure that, um, you know, expenditure at a government level is fired away from um, armaments and, and the rest of it towards public service. I'm not too sure if that would actually provide the kind of welfare state that we want. The Mary Quayles Club next meeting in April will be discussing the media's involvement in protecting the welfare state. Cat Houston for Keys TV News. Apologies for any sound issues there. Now if you were passing Barton Moss on Sunday you might have wondered what the latest noise was all about. Well Amelia Minchiver wasn't wondering, she was there amid the singing and dancing as hundreds gathered to show their support for the anti-fracking campaign. We can make it happen here, we can make it happen anywhere. <laughs> DJ Dave Haslam played a special gig at Barton Moss Camp last weekend in support of anti-fracking protesters. The site, which has become a fracking battleground over the last few months, was transformed into a lively dance floor full of people smiling and singing. I'm, I'm very much in favour of what the protectors are doing. Uh, I don't think the fracking should be here. Uh, and I thought, well, what can I do? Right, I'm a DJ. I can come down and DJ. More than 200 people of all ages flocked to the camp to enjoy a day of festivities. 
Despite the rain, despite the wind and despite the low temperatures, people are here on Barton Moss Road today to enjoy an afternoon of dancing, music and singing. They say this is a chance for the wider community to show their solidarity with protesters and to maintain pressure on authorities to halt fracking. Now let's join them for lunch. People had a chance to enjoy a delicious portion of rice with vegetables before the gig started. So we're basically here just to stand hand in hand with the people, the local people around here, so that we can show support to them. People range from young families to veteran campaigners and they all dance together. Although the gig is a very unusual way of protesting, it has been well accepted by the general public. Sometimes people think that protesting is kind of very serious business. And it is. We're protesting because we want, we love our world, we love our environment. We want a better future. The main aim of the gig is to raise awareness and encourage more people to get involved in the campaign. For Keys TV News, Emilia Mincheva. From dancing in the city, now a new dance fitness craze is starting to take over Salford. It's called Fit Steps. And it sounds like something right up your street, Dan. It's a shame you're a bit too busy to film that one, but Carly Foster went along instead. Have you ever wanted to waltz, jive, cha-cha, ramba and tango with no need of a partner? Well, you can with Fit Steps, where fitness is made strictly fun. The dance fitness phenomenon spun itself to Salford recently and is now taking the country by storm. Yes, fantastic. Everybody should try it. 18 to 70, come along. The ballroom and Latin style workout was created by the stars of Strictly Come Dancing, Natalie Lowe and Ian Waite, and Britain's most successful swimmer, Mark Foster. The Strictly stars have also trained fitness professionals on how to deliver the fitness programme. If people have watched the show, there will be steps when they dance fit steps. They'll say to each other, yes, I've seen this step before, I've seen that step before. You've got a double whammy, so you're moving around and getting fit and healthy, having fun, but also at the same time you're learning proper steps. Each Fit Steps class is 45 minutes long and there are now seven classes available across Salford. With the upbeat steps of Latin and the graceful steps of ballroom, Fit Steps is an energetic and fun way to keep fit. The class is available for everyone, even if you can't dance. No membership is required and the classes are at a low cost with proven techniques and principles so Salford can keep fit and dance like the stars of Strictly. I find with fit steps that people can come along who've never done it before, mm -hmm. and so it's exercise to music, but get the fit and have fun at the same time. This is Carly Foster, Keys TV News. Well, the show seems to be dedicated to you today, Dan, doesn't it? It's time for fashion. Well, yes, it does indeed. As we experts are only too aware, it's time to update your spring wardrobe. Siobhan Maguire has been out amongst the hipsters. Not have its own fashion week, but the city still gives London a run for its money in the style sticks as these fashionistas show us. Pair of skinny jeans, my boots I've got recently are from Office, and a jacket from Next that I got secondhand from Vintage Clothes Shop. I like eclectic mix, so variety. Not a fixed style. I think just um, any style who make, which makes me more handsome, more bright. And even though it's still cold, spring is just around the corner. And that means the season for weddings, outdoor parties and graduations. So let's have a look and see what's on offer. Manchester-based littleblackdress.co.uk houses a collection of party dresses. Editor of the site, Natalie Gibbons, talks us through some trends to look out for this spring-summer season, starting with lace and pastel colours. This is, these two, three in fact, are from um, one of our designers called Kate Fernley. She's hugely popular um, for the wedding market, the races. Coming on to trend two, um, which is embellishment. Again, you've got that little bit of cover up on your arms. Yeah. It's a nice length and yeah, and the detailing. A staple in most women's wardrobes, black will continue to be worn throughout spring, summer. So this dress, for instance, has got a bit of leather. Yeah. That was popular on the catwalk. Yeah. And also sheer. Yeah. Again, it's good Again. for covering your arms. Yeah. Um, the last trend, which gosh, Summer trends, you can't miss, is the floral yes. trend. I know it comes back every year, and every year yeah. there's a little twist on it. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, with colour and print, you just, yeah, you just can't beat a nice floral dress for the summer. Yeah. So they're sort of the four for dressing up trends I would certainly recommend this spring, summer 14. This is Siobhan McGuire, Keys TV News. In sports news, last night's Champions League game ended in another setback for Manchester United. 
They lost 2-0 at Greek champions Olympiakos. The return leg is at Old Trafford in three weeks. Well, there's been mixed reactions on Twitter, though. Victoria says, I was supporting Moyes from the first days and for our bad results, but that's getting ridiculous right now. Crossed the line yesterday. Well, the goal didn't, did it? But Bearded Genius said, I still don't think there's any chance of Moyes being psyched. He'll still be the manager of Manchester United at the beginning of next season. Now, FC United of Manchester reached the semi-finals of the Dutton Sports Cup at Colton Town tonight. A win would be fourth on the bounce for United after Saturday's 4-1 win over Ilkleston and it moved them towards the playoffs of the Evo State Premier Division. Loney Terrell late put the visitors ahead on his last appearance before returning to Notts County. But this cheeky effort from top scorer Tom Graves levelled. Jerome Wright gave United the lead after a quick start to the second half and Greaves got his second a few minutes later. Wright matched his tally with a late penalty after Tom Davies was fouled. And Carl Marginson was pleased with the win. The manager is confident his squad is capable of finishing the season strongly. Depth that's going to be needed um, for us to make an assault on on the league. We want to win on on Wednesday. There's no, there's no doubt yeah. about that. Um, you know, we're only two games from a from a possible final, and yeah, how sure. much that means to everybody, including me and the players. Manchester City fans will be heading to Wembley on Saturday, Sunday for their team's first League Cup final since 1976. Now joining us in the studio is Salford student and Blue Moon podcast panellist Sam Rosbottom to talk about the game. Hi Sam. How are you? Uh, right? Yeah, good. First question, of course, it's Manuel Pellegrini's first trip to Wembley for the team and over the last few months City have been playing generally really well, to say the least, with goals and everything. What do you think the fans can expect from the game on Sunday? Um, I think, you know, looking back at City's previous trips to Wembley, obviously last year the FA Cup final didn't go too well, obviously they lost against Wigan. Um, the year before that they won the FA Cup, 1-0 uh, against Stoke, so I think you look at every time City have been to Wembley um, in recent times, it's been quite a tight and cagey affair, I think um, quite nervy as well. I think the only time really when City have come out of the blocks is the Chelsea um, semi-final last year in the FA Cup when that yeah. was a real thriller. But I think, you know, Sunderland uh, it sort of have really picked up over recently. You know that the form's improved um, under Gus Poyet. They've sort of, you know, sort of cleared up the defensive issues, and as well going forward, they're causing a lot of problems. But I think, you know, you mentioned before it's Manuel Pellegrini's first trip to Wembley. Yeah. Um, it's you know it's his first season in England. I think you look at. Um, of all the trophies to win, you know, to get under his belt, this is an absolute great one. You look at Jose Mourinho when he came to England, that was his first trophy he won. So, you know, it'd be a great start for Manuel Pellegrini, it'd be a great start for this new era for City. Don't you think City could be classed as the underdogs? Birmingham won against Arsenal, Wigan won against City in that cup final? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I mean, you look at you look at all the odds that the bookies are giving out, you know, City are clear favourites, but, you know, like I mentioned before, it, <laughs> you look at the past, like you said, Wigan, I think it's, it's still going to be quite a tight, tight and cagey affair. The big question is, will Sergio Aguero play? He came back to training on Tuesday. Um, I think they're, they're going to do a late fitness test on him. Um, well, I think, fingers week. crossed, he'll be playing. But what finally, what's your prediction for the game? Um, it's, it's such a tough one because, you know, obviously um, I'm going to be down there. I'm going to be covering it. So I want a, a great game. But yeah. I, like I said, I've been, I've been saying it since I've, you so know. What's the final story? 1-0. One nil One to City. <laughs> Thank you, Sam, for joining us. And finally, do you think you can sum up the Word of God in 140 characters? Well, I'm far more equipped now. I've just got back from church, where I confess I've been with some vicars who are flocking to Twitter for just this aim. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Well, he probably already knows that. You tweeted it half an hour ago. But the church is realising new technologies comes new ways to communicate with its followers. David Walker, the Bishop of Manchester, is leading the campaign to get more vicars on Twitter by teaching 30 members of the clergy lessons in social media. He said, I'd want to recommend it to all vicars who want to stay in touch with both their communities and the wider world. It's cheap, it's effective, and it doesn't even make you fat. The Right Reverend Andy Salmon, or should that be RT Reverend? Get it? RT? Retweet? Oh, never mind. 
Well, he supports the Bishop of Manchester. Um, social media is a tool, uh, a tool that lots of people use. And we in the church should be no different than anybody else. Uh, make use of what's out there. Um, it would be odd if, for instance, we were not using phones, you know. We use the tools that are there to communicate. Not ones to be outdone by the Christian counterparts, the Catholics are modernising, even mentioned in the very hip fax machine. Some of the older priests were saying, you get up in the morning, you wait for the postman, he delivers the post, you spend half an hour or so actually writing a letter back to someone else in response to what they're asking you. Now you have to check the fax machine, you have to check your emails, you have to check text messaging because of the way communication has moved on. Condensing this into this may prove tricky, but it's one sure way of getting more followers, both on Twitter and in the congregation. Dan McLaughlin, Keys TV News. I wonder if um, Twitter, joining Twitter is full of empty promises. Empty, modified tweet, I'm full like of puns what you did today. There, Dan. Uh, and now let's find out how the weather's looking for us with Helen Rowe Wilcox. Thanks, Jess. Spring is on its way, showers are starting to become fewer, but the ones that are remaining are still quite strong. The weather is looking better for the weekend, hopefully carrying on to next week. After some heavy spells this morning, showers begin to ease off for the afternoon. It will remain largely dry, and Manchester and Cheshire will see the best of the sunshine. Isolated showers are still possible and it will be quite a breezy day. Temperatures above average for the time of year with highs of 9 degrees. Rain will arrive overnight but should clear by dawn leading to a dry start for your journey to work. Thursday consists of bright and sunny spells, scattered showers and some of these quite heavy. Getting hopefully better for the weekend and we should see some nice dry days on sun Saturday and Sunday. Thank you, Helen. And so it's looking good for the City fans then travelling to Wembley on Sunday, isn't it? Well, didn't help them last time, did it? No, it didn't. Uh, that's all from us here at Keys TV News. So don't forget to join us on Twitter at Keys News. Um, join us online as well, keysnews.net and on Facebook. So I'll see you next Wednesday at 1.30pm. Thank you and goodbye. Goodbye.